so the last bit is the things not to tolerate. And this one, I this list is really, really important. If any of these happen, they are huge red flags for me personally. Um, and you need to certainly um, stand your ground um, and, and voice that you're not happy about these things if, if they do happen. Um, and in some cases, you know, you might need to um, uh, get, get a refund, ask for some kind of compensation, or certainly um, just choose not to work with that coach uh, at all. So uh, we'll go through this list and then that's pretty much everything, I promise you, uh, with that. Um, so the first thing is, uh, that that's kind of a red flag and not to tolerate for, uh, for me, is if when you're, you're talking to a coach, they're trying to gaslight or guilt you into coaching programs with them. Um, I don't think it's very professional. Personally, um, a guy who's, well, a very vulnerable guy, um, it's not fair to them to make them feel bad or worse about themselves, to force them into spending what could be their life savings into working with a coach. Um, I think it's disgusting, really. Um, so if you ever come across someone who is trying to guilt, uh, guilt trip you into working with them, I just wouldn't um, because that tells me um, that they are probably very narcissistic and sociopathic and that they aren't going to care about working with you. Um, they've got no interest in caring for you. They're, they're more interested in getting the sale, making the money and then just kind of getting you through their system as soon as possible. So then they can just keep the money and, and do whatever with it. And then you'll just be lost and confused afterwards. So um, yeah, just be very wary if you come across any of those uh, sort of circumstances with a coach. Um, uh, a coach needs to be in a good state of mind. Um, if you're paying for coaching with someone and they turn up hungover or drunk or tipsy or, you know, they've stayed up all night and they're just out of it or they've, or sadly there have been coaches in the past that do do a lot of drugs, um, then you need to say no. Uh, we're not having our session today. I want you in a good state of mind if we're going to be working together. If I'm paying a lot of money to work with you, um, I want you in the best form knowing that that's going to bring the best out in me. And if a coach just isn't isn't all there in their head, then uh, I can already predict that all the coach is going to do on that session is just literally point at girls and tell you to go and talk to them and that's it. You the, that's that's the most of the coaching you're going to get, which you could just easily do by going out with friends, and then they literally do the exact same thing. So um, yeah, a coach has to be in a good state of mind. Don't tolerate if they've gone partying or clubbing the night before, or if they've had like a late date or something. Don't don't tolerate it. You, if you want, if you're paying a lot of money, then you you need to be expecting the best. If you uh, know that you've just gone for a, a coach who's just maybe a bit more of a punter, then, you know, you'll obviously have to just kind of take the risk with that. Um, which uh, leads on to the next thing. Um, if you're then working with a coach and they haven't got any kind of like microphone equipment with them or they aren't planning to listen to your com uh, conversations during your approaches, then that is also a big no-no for me. And as far as I'm concerned, no mics, no session. Um, if you're paying, again, a lot of money to work with a coach, you are paying the money for them to listen to your interactions, see your interactions, and then give you feedback. It's very difficult to give you feedback um, and to develop your skill if they're not listening, um, if they're not watching. Um, and uh, uh, I've certainly seen that a few times um, uh, over the last 14 years, uh, or quite a lot of times, where just coaches just couldn't be bothered, um, you know, and, and I think it's a very uh, disgusting mentality to, to have. So you have to, um, if, if anything, asking during the consultation, like how are they going to be able to give you the feedback? Are they going to listen into your interactions and stuff? You know, make sure that they have got equipment that they're going to use. And then if they turn up on the day and they haven't got equipment, say, 
well, you know, okay, well, what's the alternative for you to be able to listen in? And if they're not doing any kind of setup with, um, you know, listening in via a phone or something, like maybe they've got headphones and they can like call you. And then as soon as maybe you're going for the number, you can just like cancel the call or something. If they're not doing anything like that, don't have that session. Um, say no, uh, I, I've, I've paid for you to listen in to my conversations. Um, so respectfully, I'd rather us reschedule for another day because I then know I'm going to get uh, a much better experience out of it. You know, so you, you, you can't be afraid to, to stand your ground with, with, um, these sort of circumstances. Um, because yeah, because vulnerable guys, they unfortunately they, they get taken advantage of, and and it's not not right. Um, uh, another one. Uh, so the, the next one, uh, the focus should be only on you during the personal sessions, and for no one else to interfere. So if you're paying for a one-on-one, -on -one or you're doing group training, and maybe there's two of you working with a coach or something, it is that coach's responsibility to only focus on you, not if they're best friend turns up and then they stand there and have a conversation and they start pointing for you to go and talk to girls that is not coaching okay that is just someone who is being super lazy and unprofessional if that happens you have to turn around and say um I i'm sorry not to not to be rude but you know i've paid you x amount of money i i kind of expect that you know you to be coaching me not having a, a chat with with your your friend uh what a coach should be doing if, if a coach is watching this then a coach needs to be turning around if someone if someone's come over to them to start a conversation then it's okay if they're if if someone's kind of treated them a bit like a celebrity because it happens on the street many times i've had my clients get stopped on the street in the same way that they kind of teach the the approaching and um you know guys try and have a conversation but ultimately the most respectful thing that a coach can do is say look I'm really sorry we're gonna to have to have a chat another time i'm actually working with a client right now but i really do appreciate that you've come over you've uh you've said hello and things but you know what my client is spending a fair bit of money on me and uh, it would be disrespectful to him if i uh give you my attention when i should be giving it uh on him instead uh, now that is like the best thing that a coach can say and um and certainly if you do hear a coach say that then that is like brownie points and bonus points uh from me personally um with that so and that is then someone to definitely consider uh going to for coaching because they value your time and definitely money that you've spent um the ratio of two guys to one coach any more than that should be a no-no. Um, if you end up doing something like a weekend training and a coach is getting more than two people working with them, then that that is also a red flag. They're basically just trying to milk getting um, more money by getting more guys on the coaching. If and it's and it's unmanageable uh, is really the the term here. Um, no one can spread their attention that thin by doing it across three people. It is very very difficult. Two people is is actually quite easy, but as soon as you add that third person on to try and coach, it's it's near impossible. It's like literally like trying to juggle like all these different things. It is very very difficult. Um, so if you do end up doing like a weekend training or like a boot camp or something, or if you're doing a training that is joint with other people, whatever then that can be make sure that there is a ratio of two guys to one coach any more than that you need to complain to them and say like i'm not happy that uh that there's um that the coach is being shared that thin um and um you need to basically request if then there can be like another coach to to work with especially one that you've vetted and that you're happy to work with as well uh something else is uh that you're not paying to hang out with the coach Okay, um, certainly over the years, there has been this uh, very, I've heard, I've overheard very weird conversations that uh, some coaches have this mentality that guys are essentially just paying to hang out with them. They're not. Um, you know, if you're paying a lot of money, you're paying to have a coaching service. If I'm paying to hang out with someone, I'll go and hang out with one of my best friends. Um, and I can honestly, I could save a lot more money than that. 
and if I want to uh, hang out, hang out with friends, and also do street approaching, then I will just go out with people, and it won't cost a penny uh, that way. So, um, if you get the impression, especially during your coaching with uh, uh, with a dating coach, that they are just essentially just hanging out with you, like it, as if it's like two lads just walking around, then I would also be a little bit wary of that. Um, sometimes it's just in their nature, but there you can tell if a coach is just being lazy. Um, uh, and I can't really give an example with that, but there are that you you'll you'll just know if a coach if it just feels like a coach is just essentially just sort of like walking around with you, and they're not really giving you advice and feedback, or if you're asking questions about like what to do in this circumstance or that. And it's just literally just walking around together and then until they go like, yeah, go and talk to that person over there. Then yeah, that that's, that's a big no, no for me. You're not hanging out with them. You're, you're there as a client. Um, if you get delegated or passed to a different coach instead of who you paid for. So I kind of mentioned this or alluded to it just slightly before, but, um, if you're doing like a training program and you haven't paid to work with a particular coach, um, you might then get passed on to other coaches that they, that they have hired underneath them. Now, that doesn't mean, though, that they've got any content or proof that they are any good online. And unfortunately, over the, uh, the 14 years as well, uh, believe it or not, there are coaching companies that don't vet their client uh, or don't vet their coaches. They don't really do any kind of checks or backgrounds or anything like that or look into them. They just kind of hire them on the like, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. You'll, you'll do. All right. Here's, here's the fee and this and that. So if you do go to, if you are thinking about doing like a, a weekend training or, or like a, a, a group coaching program, um, make sure though that, you know, whoever the other coaches are, make sure that there is proof that the other coaches are good too. Um, because it's unfair on you if you're going to be spending all your time uh, and especially money on doing a program and finding that you're not working with the coaches in particularly coaches. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it plural, but, um, coaches that you want to work with that, you know, are going to help you. And instead you'll work, uh, work, working with people who you, there's just no proof that they're any good. You're it, And it's, it's, it's too easy in this industry to just take someone's word for it. Like that, like, Oh yeah. Okay. So they're just, yeah, they yeah, they're good. Yeah, sure. So yeah, just, just be wary of that. And it's okay to voice, um, on a, a coaching program that you're not happy. So, you know, say, look, I, can I work with this coach and this coach please? And, you know, and if there's problems with that, you have to stand your ground with it and say, well, look, I'm, I'm not happy. Um, uh, I, you know, I don't know these coaches. I don't know how good they are. Um, as far as I'm concerned, if they've got nothing, um, online for me to see, then they could be just literally just a random person on the, off of the street. And I don't want to be uh, essentially handing my money over to work with someone that I just don't know. Um, and, you know, and if there's a, a problem with it and say, well, you know what, I'd rather than me have coaching just one on one with you or respectfully, I don't want to do this coaching. This, this isn't what I signed up for. Um, now, you, again, you can kind of uh, ask some of these questions during the consultation, but yeah, this is also the circumstance if you do um, have that uh, situation play out on your training. A uh, few more here, <laughs> few more here, but I, I, this is like the the ultimate guide for you, um, and uh, I'd rather you know cover everything that I can think of um, with this. Um, where was I? Where was I? Um, uh, Oh yeah, I, I kind of mentioned that um, just before that, yeah, some coaches hire coaches with no vetting and pass you onto them. So you need to ask for proof of their skills. Yeah, that was, uh, I, that kind of tied into that previous one. Uh, and be, okay, so this one, really important as well. Be okay to talk openly with your peers about bad experiences that you've had with dating coaches. It's also too easy for coaches to write five star written reviews of them themselves or, or basically give clients a nudge to write a review for them, especially when the euphoria is high, the adrenaline's pumping, uh, the endorphins and serotonin are running through their body because they've just had such a great weekend. Um, but, you know, weeks later, 
they're back at square one. And then they find out that there's no aftercare. The coach doesn't give a toss about them and stuff. Um, that if you haven't had the best experiences also working with a coach, if you've been taken advantage of, be okay to voice that out loud. If guys remain quiet, there are certainly bad coaches in the world um, that will take advantage of you. Don't be afraid to say out loud that you aren't happy with them. You actually need to give them maybe a bit of a scare and give them that feedback so they understand that maybe they are slipping their standards and that they need to bring that professionalism back up to give you or give new guys the results that they deserve. Um, they should also then be offering some extra compensation if you're not happy as well, if you didn't get everything that you wanted to out of the service. But that can that's open to debate what counts with that. But you need to be standing your ground and saying, like, I, I had a terrible experience. I felt really taken advantage of. I went and did this coaching and the coach didn't have headphones. They didn't listen into my interactions. They didn't give me really any advice or feedback. We walked around uh, and he took me to the most quietest of areas that I just didn't have any conversations. Um, I didn't get the feedback that I needed. You know, that that sort of thing. It's good to voice that out loud. You know, or he that that coach turned up drunk and it and then they still gave me coaching and it was awful because they were just like falling asleep during during the session. Like like that sort of thing. And, and sadly, this is, this has happened in the past, but that sort of thing, you need to voice that out loud. Um, I'd rather the, I'd rather then it scare off the terrible coaches in the world and encourage, uh, the, uh, the good ones to, uh, to stay. Um, uh, so a few more here. Uh, <laughs> so if you don't understand what they're teaching, don't be afraid to ask for clarity. So I kind of mentioned a bit earlier, like as soon as people watch a couple of videos, suddenly they just perceive themselves as these like phil philosophical experts and they can just talk about everything in the dating world, like as if they've just been doing it for the last 30 years or something. Um, if a coach starts using really big terminology that you just don't understand, ask them to simplify it. Ask them to give you a better explanation of it. Um, if they don't, then you straight away need to say, well, I, I don't think then you're a very good coach if you don't know how to explain to me how to do this or that in very, very simple terms. Now, again, that can either be a guy or a coach who might be inexperienced or perhaps maybe they've just been so lost in doing the other dating coaching stuff that they've just sort of forgotten what simple terminology can be. Um, but also there's a chance that you've just got guys who just don't fully understand or coaches that don't fully understand what they're teaching. They can help themselves, but they can't help other people. And uh, perhaps it's best that they don't help other people, that they should just, you know, do what they're doing more as a hobby rather than as a job. Um, make sure that you're also getting actual feedback um, only pointing to girls to talk to is not good enough. Um, so this kind of ties in again with like, you know, with coaches not listening into your conversations, um, you're, you're paying for feedback. You know, if you're going on a date with someone and you've got a dating coach who is, you know, very, very espionage, like have, uh, come to listen to your interactions, you need to get those notes of what they um, they picked up during the session. If they just sort of are just sitting there having drinks whilst you're on the date and they're not really keeping track of anything. And then at the end they go like, yeah, well done. Yeah, you did a really good job. That That isn't coaching. That's not what you're paying for. And then you need to, uh, you need to stay. That, that's, that's not good advice. And say that, I, I say, and say you expected better, that you wanted better. Um, you know, if you've spent a few hundred quid or whatever just for that, that say that's not worth it and you can demand your money back. So that's not not coaching. So again, you've got to stand your ground with this sort of stuff and show like you're not tolerating or being, take, being taken advantage of. Um, and the last thing as well is punctuality. Make sure that you are getting the time that you're, uh, you're paying for. 
Um, it's very easy for coaches to, you know, set their own prices and set their own standards and stuff. But, you know, ultimately you are going to them for a professional service and you deserve to get that. Um, if they are turning up half an hour late when you've sat there, then you need to make sure that you are still getting the full amount of time that you've paid for um, instead of it still ending at, at that particular time. Um, you know, or you need to be demanding that you want some money back. Um, I have known coaches in the past who have actually just not turned up at all, which is terrible um, to think that they just haven't turned up at all. Um, uh, or they've turned up like an hour or so late and then they've still tried to get away with saying like, um, yeah, well, because you managed to get on an instant date, um, I figured like, yeah, that, that just kind of counts as, as the time because I was just not able to do anything whilst you were, you know, on that date and stuff. I've seen all sorts of like, like very weird negotiations, um, and stuff. So yeah, I, th that is pretty much everything <laughs> in this video. Um, uh, I apologize for the length of this, but this is like everything to consider. Um, so, you know, and if you, and you're spending a lot of money on a coach as well, and you know, you want to make sure like it is an investment in the right coach and also for yourself. Um, I hate hearing stories. I've had so many over the years where, um, clients or, or, or clients of coaches have gone to like three or four different coaches to learn, um, the, the skills of street approaching. And it's just, it's just nonsense. Um, it shouldn't be happening. Um, I, I'm hearing as well of clients who are paying, uh, like five figures for, for services and they're just not getting the value for it. And they've only done it because, you know, that a coach had the reputation or that people essentially persuaded them to do it or that they were peer pressured uh, into going to that coach and it's not okay. Um, you know, you, so you need to be very, very cautious with your spending. Unfortunately, it's too easy for anyone to come into this industry and just claim that they're a coach. And as far as I'm concerned, if a coach hasn't, or if a guy hasn't worked with me with starting or running their, um, their dating coach business on YouTube, then they just aren't a coach to work with at all. So, um, so yeah, so there you have it. Um, this is clearly well and truly over an hour long, uh, of a video. Um, I really hope if you've stuck through it all the way to the end here, um, thank you so much for watching. Um, do like this video, uh, subscribe to my channel and stay up to date on other stuff. And more importantly, I want to hear some of the experiences you've gone through with working with dating coaches or what you've gone through through with the uh, the vetting process and maybe questions and research that you did to find the best coach that worked for you. Um, because if it's advice that can be passed to other people, and I really want this channel to, to grow and help other men with um, their confidence and working with the right kind of coaches, then do leave the, uh, uh, do leave, uh, the research and stuff done that you've done underneath this video. And last of all, if you are someone who needs to be held accountable uh, with your um, with taking action uh, since been working with a dating coach, because I'm going to also assume maybe some of you watching have worked with dating coaches, then I do offer a life coaching program that is specific to people who've worked with a dating coach uh, to help you to maintain uh, the, uh, the skill or your conversation skills of uh, uh, meeting and attracting women and hopefully keep that ball rolling for you. So, you know, even months later, you can ingrain this routine uh, and have it into place where then you can just go forward in future and you shouldn't need to work with any more dating coaches ever again. It shouldn't be uh, uh, one that you keep going back to. It should be you get everything that you need and then you get on with your life. So um, if you need that help, I am here for you as well. But other than that, I am absolutely exhausted with this video. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my cold tea and uh, look forward to my next video coming out soon.